Welcome to Minkunst Hardware. In this video I'm gonna try to give Plex HD X99 Turbo second chance. Maybe this motherboard can be used after all. I have also received my Xeon E5 2640V3, thus I will be able to test this motherboard with a locket processor and with registered ECC server RAM as well as usual desktop DDR4 RAM. If you have seen my previous video, then you probably know that this motherboard was crashing after 10 or 15 minutes of Prime95 load. This issue I was able to fix by readjusting thermal pad under the heatsink over the VRM components. After removing the heatsink, I have figured out that one of the power elements was not covered with the thermal pad and it didn't have any direct contact with the heatsink. That's why probably it was causing the shutdown after overheating. Simple realignment of the existing thermal pad on the heatsink solved the problem and this motherboard is now staying stable uh, even after half an hour or an, an hour Prime95 stress test with my core i7-6800K. Unfortunately, while tweaking with the BIOS of this motherboard, I have managed to break it. That's why I had to buy this BIOS programmer which helped me to restore the motherboard to the normal operational state. Luckily, I have got the backup of the BIOS and that backup worked perfectly fine to restore it into the BIOS chip and the motherboard is back to life. Using the official American Megatrends tool to explore BIOS features, I was able to dig into the BIOS backup and take a look what we have inside. And strangely enough, I have figured out that this BIOS has features to overclock CPU and overclock RAM, as well as set memory timings. Let's first take a look at the CPU overclocking features. The feature is hidden under the Advanced Power Management Configuration, CPU P-State Control, XE Ratio Limit. Here we can specify individual clock speed ratio for each core, if one core used, if two cores are used, three, four and up to 24 core used. If you have six core processor, you need to specify for six core. If you have eight core, you need to specify for eight cores. Naturally, clock speed of two cores cannot be higher than clock speed of the one core, but it can be equal. There is one mysterious option which is called overclocking lock. Unfortunately, I was not able to figure out what is it made for and if it shall be enabled or disabled, but if I am enabling the overclock and lock, then every option that I try to specify in the core ratio limit is completely ignored and probably that's why this option is enabled by default. That's why I kept this option disabled and I was able to achieve 3.8 one core boost ratio with my core i7-6800K. Now let's take a look how the CPU is actually behaving with this, such an attempt to overclock it on this motherboard. CPU Z does not show that the core clock ratio is actually changed. It's still indicating that the clock ratio is 36, which is according to the Intel specification of maximum turbo boost 3.6 GHz. But in CPU ID HW monitor, we can see that one core is actually turbo boosting to 3.728 MHz, which is roughly 3.8 multiplier with a bus speed of 98 MHz and not 100 MHz. All the other cores are staying at 36 multiplier and having about 3.6 GHz speed. This is a very weird behavior and I was trying to increase the clock speed to, multi to 4 GHz with 40 multiplier, but it's ignored. This was the maximum I was able to achieve. Under full load, the CPU is still boosting up to these values, like 5 cores are staying at 3.6 GHz and 1 core is going to 3.8 GHz. But because the bus speed is lower than 100 MHz, that's why 5 cores are staying at something like 3.5 GHz and 1 core is staying like 3.7 GHz. Now let's take a look how this motherboard is going to behave with the locked Intel Xeon E5 2640V3 CPU. Unfortunately, there is something completely screwed with this motherboard and Xeon E5 2640V3 does not boost over 2.8 GHz. It does not matter if it's single-threaded workload or it's multi-threaded workload. 
The CPU is just not going above 28 multiplier, thus its clock speed is staying around 2.7 to 2.8 GHz. This is a very big disappointment, because otherwise this might, might have been a nice combination of a cheap motherboard and a cheap CPU. I have tried completely stock bias with the stock default settings, I have tried to enable the performance profile, I have tried to manually set the clock multiplier, nothing is working. This CPU on this particular motherboard is not boosting higher than 2.8 GHz. According to Intel's specification, this CPU is supposed to be boosting to 3.4 GHz on one core, and as others are reporting online, this CPU is boosting to 3 GHz when all of the cores are utilized. On the good side though, this motherboard was working with the all memory sticks that I was trying on it. This includes 32 gigs per stick DDR4-2666 ECC registered memory. Uh, unfortunately, I have only two sticks, that's why I was not able to test if this motherboard would actually support 128 gigs of RAM. But with two sticks, 32 gigabytes each, it was working perfectly fine with 64 gigs in dual channel. If I install four sticks of RAM, registered ECC or a normal desktop RAM, the motherboard is working fine in quad channel memory. Another downside is that with the locked Xeon Fi 2640, I was not able to overclock RAM at all. With the i7-6800K, the RAM was working stable at 2600 mega transfers, but with the Xeon Fi 2640, the RAM was working at 1886 mega transfers, which is the official specification of the CPU. No overclocking options were applied when I attempt to change the memory settings through the BIOS. After I have managed to turbo boost my core i7-6800K to 3.8 GHz on one core, I was quite happy and thought that now I have actually made this motherboard work. But after some excessive testing, I have figured out that there is going something completely wrong. Sometimes the bus speed for the CPU is dropping to as low as 1 MHz, sometimes CPU Z is reporting as 350 MHz, which are completely abnormal values. This should never ever happen, the motherboard shall work with a stable 100 MHz bus speed frequency, sometimes it can go to like 98, 99 or maybe 101, but it shall not drop to 50 MHz, 30 MHz or not to mention the 1 MHz, which you can see on this short clip. Such behavior happened under certain workloads and I could not explain why this happening and how it's happening. USB 3 ports I was not able to fix either. I have tried to download and install multiple different drivers. I have also tried to download and install USB 3 drivers for the Huanan JTF motherboard from the official Huanan website. Unfortunately, those drivers do not fit and official Intel X99 drivers for USB 3 do not work either. I'm still having exactly the same issue if I'm trying to run Crystal Disk Mark over the USB 3 port with my Samsung SSD T5, system is first starting normally, then it hands, and then it goes into completely weird behavior with the bus clock jumping all over the place from 1 to 350 megahertz. After a while, system restores its state, and then it repeats and repeats, as long as there is some kind of a workload going through the USB 3 port. I have tried to disable USB suspension mode in Windows Power settings, as it was recommended in the comments to one of my videos. Unfortunately, it did not solve the problem. The issue was exactly as before, with or without enabling or disabling a suspension mode in Windows Power settings. This is how memory timings and voltage override settings in the BIOS look like. Unfortunately, this option is not available through the BIOS UI, but it's possible to set these values using the MIBCP program, which I was using to set the CPU core clock ratio. Due to the other problems, I didn't even bother to tickle with the memory settings, since the memory settings would not solve the turbo boost problem and the bus speed jump up and down. After all of this, I can conclude that X99 Turbo Motherboard is a complete garbage and you shall avoid it as much as possible. 
Maybe Chinese will release refined version of this motherboard, which will not be as garbage as this one, and it's actually gonna work. But for now, I would recommend to stay away from this motherboard and take a look at some other alternatives. Well, what's next? And next we have Huanon GX99 F8 motherboard, which has just been released and available for purchasing from AliExpress, Taobao and uh, other Chinese resellers. Unfortunately, this motherboard has not arrived yet, but I have already ordered it and waiting for it for the review. Huanon GX99 TF and Huanon GX99 M have already arrived to my place, I just need to go and pick them up. So review for these two motherboards will come out quite soon. That's all I have for today. Thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope you enjoyed it and goodbye.